I'm Piggy. We will learn how to draw and how to rig and animate. Piggy course. Welcome to this introduction to 2D bone animation with Blender and Grease Pencil. By the end of it, you will know how to do simple animation and use most of the animation tools and features inside Blender. You will learn here everything you need to animate the piggy, but you can support me by buying the extended version from my Gumroad. The extended course goes at a slower pace for 3 hours, covering drawing, rigging and animation, and packs some extra Blender and Grease Pencil tips and tricks. The rigged piggy character is included in the download or you can buy it separately. In part 6 we will create more animation actions and combine them in the NLA editor, then learn several ways to create poses to add to the asset library and how to insert them in our timelines. Now I want the eyes of my piggy to blink, but I'll do it in a new action. So let's hit this X here to remove our walk cycle, it won't delete it. And then we have this new action here. It has no keyframes. And I want to go to frame one and to add a blink. So it selects these two bones. And we could do eye location, but it will add location for these two channels too. So I think I will do it manually. Select one, right click here and insert single keyframe. And then do the same here. And then I go two frames further and enable the X here. I move this bone G here and close the eyes. Then I move two frames again. I do it with the arrows on my keyboard, the left and right arrows. I duplicate this frame, but let's select both bones. So this bone and shift select this bone. Select these two and shift D duplicate here. And then I move two frames again and we select these ones and shift D and duplicate here. And now we have a blink. I won't have just one blink, but several ones spaced randomly. Let's change the end to maybe to 200. And inside the space, I will add a few blinks. So select all the keyframes and do shift D. I want to have two close together like this. And then one more, one more like this, maybe here. So let's change the length again to maybe 210. And let's test this animation. Let's make these closer to have like a double blink like this. So we have this. And we rename this action to blink or I blink, I dot blink, create a fake user. And now let's switch to our needed channels action and I will duplicate it and I will create a stand in position for our piggy. Let's name this stand in, enter. Let's move this bone again. Let's disable the X, move this bone here, select these two bones, move them again here. Stand in is simple, we just move these arms like this and maybe also flip this bone. We can do S, X, X, so that we uh, resize on the local X and type in minus one on the numpad and enter. Now we can move it like this and, and we also make a fake user so we don't lose this action. Now how to combine these actions to one animation. For that we need the NLA editor or the nonlinear animation editor. So I'll go here and change to nonlinear animation. I will open my action editor here, top sheet action editor hide this sidebar in. Let's get our piggy here. Let's hide the sidebar too in. Yes, yeah, so we have our stand-in action here and we can push it down to the nonlinear animation editor and we can also push it down from here. Let's push it down. We get our stand-in piggy down here and now we choose another action and that is the walk cycle. Nice and we push it down too. Now we have a walk cycle on top of the stand-in position. Since the walk cycle is on top of the stand-in action, the piggy is no longer standing. If we disable this walk cycle track, now the piggy is standing. Okay, now we'll select our walk cycle and do G and move it a little bit in time. So now the piggy should be standing until the walk cycle come and it starts walking, but that didn't happen. So here in the side menu again, if you can see it do N, we go here under extrapolation, we expand it. So we have hold and we have nothing and we have hold forward. So hold means that this action will have effects before it starts and after it ends. And hold forward will only make it hold after it ends. I don't know why this action slash was added. Can we delete it? I think we can go here, delete tracks. So we select again this one. It's hard to see when it's not selected. 
And now since the work cycle is not holding before it starts, now we can see the effects of the standing action until the work cycle starts. But now it starts suddenly and we don't want that. So we select the work cycle again and go to blend and we have blend in and blend out. So this is like fading and we change this to five for five frames and you see that we have this line here and now from the standing position, there is an easing, like a fading, and the pig starts slowly to work. And now even if we have hold enabled for the work cycle, it still won't work before it starts because we have this blending, we have this fading. The standing action, of course, has hold enabled. If it doesn't have hold, it will just end here after one frame. So hold or hold forward is needed for the standing action too. And always the action that is on top will override the action that is beneath it. That's why we can also go here and right click and change track ordering, move it up or down or move it to the top or to the bottom so you move it up you see now that the piggy will stay standing even if we have the walk cycle here beneath it so select it first drag ordering down yes and now we add the blinking action so we go here and where is it i blink and we push it down but the walk cycle just ended here so we need to repeat it we select it again and we go under action clip and under repeat and change this to the end so we can repeat it for less than one time and we can increase this value and have it stop here and now the piggy will just keep walking and do the same for the eye blink so we increase this so that it covers the whole duration of our animation and now we have a piggy that is standing and then it starts walking and its eyes are blinking. But what if I want more duration to our eye blink? What if I don't want it to start blinking from frame one and I don't want to end it here? So for that, there are these values here and the action clip, frame start and frame end. If we decrease this, the action will start before the first frame. And if we increase this, we have more length to it in the end. So decreasing this will add more space to the start and increasing this will add more space to the end. Let's do tab here to be able to see the frames. These are the real frames. This is the real duration of our action. And this is the space that we just added. So like this and like this. And now we can change this to two or three or whatever and have the piggy blink forever. And we have this extra space in the beginning and in the end. Now, if we had tab again, however, we lose what we just made. You see that the action strip here changed position and the length was reduced. If you do tab again, you see that again, we have frames in the end and frames in the start. Tab is supposed to allow us to edit our actions easily and quickly. We can go to the action editor here and add more keyframes or remove keyframes or alter keyframes. But if it alters our time in two, that is not a thing that we want. I will hit tab again. I will try to fix the time and again. So minus 20, I guess here and a little bit more here. G and and move it to frame one. This is very useful, the value that we see here, so that we know where the strip is at frame one. Left click, nice. The reason of that behavior is this sitting here. It's called sync length, and it's designed so that if, for example, we select this one, and we do tab and edit this action by adding more frames, for example, and its length changes, and then you do tab again, it will update the length of the action automatically. So let's do control Z, control Z, control Z. But in our case here, we don't need it so if you disable it and then you do tab you see that now everything stays the same the frames that we added in the end and in the beginning stayed next we have the playback scale and it has nothing to do with scale but with speed so this one will change the speed of your action or animation if you hit shift and left click and drag like this under one it will be faster and above one it will be slower this is a very useful way and quick way to change the speed of your animations let's put one again here then if you go up you get the blending mode by default it is replace and that's what makes the actions above others override what the actions beneath them have and sometimes you animate the same bones in those actions which can create some conflicts for example if you go to the eye blink tab and then add a frame for the IK bone G move it up like this then N since it's not an available keyframe in this action we should add it manually so right click insert single keyframe and then again here insert single keyframe and now we go here tab again and we try to animate and you see the location of the bone was overwritten by the eye blink action now we can try to change this by changing the blending mode from replace 
to combine for example and we get this it is better but still weird and in some cases you just have to delete the channels that you don't need sometimes you may need to change the ordering of your actions so in this case we go back to the eye blink tab again we go to this keyframe and we do xd deleted sometimes you may need to go deeper and expand your channels and look for the channel that you don't need in some cases for example let's take one of the bones maybe you need x and y rotation in both actions but the z rotation is not needed in one of them so you just delete the keyframes for that channel alone and this is one of the things that locking these channels and using only available channels help because it reduces the clutter and since we have less channels keyframed we will also have less conflicts to deal with and troubleshooting the conflicts will be easier too so this is it briefly about the nonlinear animation panel. It is a very powerful one. You see how easy we could combine different animations. And now we can reuse our walk cycle action and our eye blink, the standing action too. Now another way to help you animate is to create poses for your character and add them to the asset browser. To use this feature, you need to enable the pose add-on. So you go to preferences under add-ons and check for just type in pause and you get this animation pause library in the documentation it says that it is enabled by default but it was not in my case so enable it and now you will get a new tab in the sidebar so it's in and we get this one animation it's only visible in pause mode so here it's not visible here in pause mode we get this animation sidebar here here when you create your poses they will be populated let's change back to the top sheet to the action editor if you hit n you see that we have these two buttons to create a pause asset or copy a pause as an asset creating a pause asset is actually creating an action an action that has only one frame and can't be animations like regular actions for example we rotate the head like this and then maybe we rotate the arms this one rotated up and this one rotate it like this you see here that we are in new action we are not editing an existing action and then you select the bones that you need you may select all the bones of the character or just a few bones depending on how or for what you want to use your action so let's select these bones shift select shift select the head and the arms bones and now we can hit this button create pause asset and voila so some keyframes were created it doesn't matter on which frame they are created and a new action was created too it's called just piggy armature we may rename it here to maybe head dot bend enter and you see that it was marked as an asset you see this books icon here and it was populated here and also a thumbnail was added we can open the asset browser here if you can see the icon to change area use the mouse wheel and here we switch to the asset browser scroll down and you see our pose asset you can select it and do n and in sidebar you can also change its name or thumbnail etc so n again to hide this menu and you see here that now create pose asset was grayed out so you saw that it worked before we opened the asset browser but when the asset browser is opened you need to change here from all to current file to make this button work so this is the first method of creating an asset another method we could just get one of these actions here for example the needed channels we can either edit it or we can duplicate it and edit the new one duplicate and maybe name it head dot bent dot zero zero two enter and go to frame one we don't want to create more keyframes because as i said a pose asset needs to have only one frame so this time we bend the heads in the other direction and maybe we create some weird pose for the arms so this is it this action can be turned into a pose asset by just left clicking here on the name and left click on mark as asset so as soon as you do that you see that this book icon was added here it is marked as an asset the blue color means that it has a fake user and that it won't be deleted if we close blender and you see that all these actions have f in the beginning of their names and it was added here to the sidebar and added here to the asset browser and also an icon was added to it another method to add a pose asset is to go for example to the work cycle here and then choose a frame for example here and then select your bones that you want to use let's select everything here a and then do copy pause as asset so that it copies this exact position here copy pause as asset and then you go here to the asset browser make sure that current file is selected if you have all and then go to assets this best as new asset will be grayed out so current file and we do asset passed as new asset so this is the third method and to add a pause asset to your animation you need to select your bones if you don't know which bones you need you can right click on your pose asset and do select pose bones 
and see that the head and the arms bones were selected and then you just double click on it and you have this Control z for this one all the bones can be selected or just do select pause bones so all the bones and then double click and we have this we have no visible change here because it was copied from the same frame and that's it Control z if you go here under item you see that only the needed channels were keyed if you go to the second action to here this one also we see that only the needed channels were added because we created it from the existing needed channels where only those channels were keyed and if you go to the first one where are the frames i can see them let's select everything yes so go here and select the head bone for example you see that everything here was keyed even the ones that were locked so this happens when you create a pause asset from this button but if you are in an action that has only the needed channels keyed and then you insert your pause you see that only the needed channels are keyed and not all the ones that are keyed inside the pause action okay now what if we don't have any action opened here let's do Control z to remove these frames and just remove this action and now we have no keyframes and nothing available we select all the bones and then we double click on this one you see that it does apply the pause but it doesn't add any keyframes because we don't have available keyframes now if we want to edit these thumbnails you see that the piggy here is a little bit small so we can zoom in using the camera not zoom in but get closer to to the piggy let's do g y and get closer to it it will get out of the boundaries of this camera but you see that the thumbnail is square so it will cover all this area here or you can go here and change the aspect ratio so we copy this Control c to here enter and now we have a square camera and you can do again g y and get even closer to our piggy and now if you do n and try to update the thumbnail for this one for example so we have this button you see that it was updated but it was updated with the pause displayed in the viewport and not the actual pause so you need first to select your bones don't know why it's not working oh we were not in pose mode so back to pose mode we do select pose bones and double click did i mention that in the animation panel here you can just click once to apply pause and not double click but here you need to double click and here and now we can again generate our thumbnail and we have this very nice but how about the colors why is it gray here so blender will use this render engine it's called so you go here and the render is called the workbench engine so we select it and then it will use for color the material color and since we used color attributes the actual material color is just this gray and black we select our piggy materials yes we have a gray fill and we have black strokes again to the render panel with the workbench selected we switch to attribute instead to use the color attributes and now again we update the thumbnail and we have colors how beautiful is this let's again select our armature in pose mode select all the bones double click this guy and update the thumbnail again to this one double click and update and we have this beautiful thumbnails for our poses let's now delete these and needed frames from our default action if you have set up your camera already for your project and maybe added some keyframes to it and you don't want to move it to create the thumbnails you can create a new camera by doing shift a in object mode and click on camera here or you just select your camera and duplicate it shift t right click or escape and now we have two cameras and you can change active camera either by selecting your camera and doing control zero in viewport or here you see these icons here so the one that is lighter it means that this camera is active and now you can switch active camera very quickly from here and you can edit this second camera you can rename it for example pose camera of course it needs to be active when you do your poses for example if we have a pose for just the head we can frame the head like this and then let's select our armature go back to pose mode and create a new pose asset and yes and just to remember that the active camera is the one that will be used when rendering your animation this is the end of part six subscribe leave a like and if you have any questions leave them in the comments section in part seven we learn how to make the mouth size react to sound as a simple way to do lip syncing and by the way learn a few advanced settings in the graph editor how to add sound to our project and more nla editor practice thanks for watching and peace